Hey tech enthusiasts, welcome to today's mind blowing tutorial. Get ready to witness the magic of Ponagachi, your ultimate Wi Fi hacking companion. In this video, I will unveil the secrets behind the incredible device and show you how to build your own. So, if you are ready to unlock the full potential of your tech skills and dive into the world of ethical hacking, stick around. This is the one tutorial you wouldn't want to miss. Let's make some waves with Ponagachi. It's all about humanity. So before moving forward to the video, I just want to clarify to you guys that this video is meant for educational purpose only and I do not promote any unethical content over here. So all the knowledge you gain from here should be used for ethical purpose only. I am here showing you the guys that how easily can someone hack into your Wi-Fi and you should use a strong password in your Wi-Fi so that someone cannot get unauthorized access to your Wi-Fi. So that being said, now let's move on. And you must try this on your own Wi-Fi router. I am, I am using my own Wi-Fi router over here as you can see this is the Yattel Wi-Fi router and you must have the permission from the admin or the owner of the router on which you are trying this task. When it comes down to hardware requirements the first and the most important thing is the compute unit. So the Ponagachi officially support Raspberry Pi 0W but you can make it work on a Raspberry Pi 02W which is more powerful than this motherboard that I am using currently and secondly you can use a display so I am going with this WebSer 2.13 inch ink display which is officially supported and one thing you should keep in mind before buying any displays that Ponagachi doesn't support all the displays so over here I am showing you the lists of displays that are supported officially by Ponagachi so recently I make this thing work on a TFT display that is 3.5 inch TFT display I will be making a video very soon on that topic third thing is an SD card so I am going with this 8GB SD card because all the SD cards are now flashed with some OSS that are required for other projects. But I recommend you to use at least 16 GB of SD cards which will help you to capture more handshakes. Also you will need this type of micro USB data cable to copy these files that is the capture files from Ponagachi to your computer so that you can use different Haskell algorithms to crack those Wi-Fi passwords. So the last thing you will need will be a power bank. So I made this power bank recently so that I can use this on with the Ponagachi and it's the similar size of the Raspberry Pi 0W so it is most portable and it's a 4000 mAh battery and it gives it backup of around 8 to 9 hours so it is sufficient for me but you can use any other power banks ready made like the AMI power banks I will link some in the description now let's see what are the software configurations we need to make first of all navigate to the description box and over there I have provided the link to this repository on github so just click on that link and you will be redirected to this repository so over here first of all as you can see we need to download the zip file from here because it contains the drivers that we need to install and the config.toml file after downloading the zip file scroll down and over here I have provided the official website for the Ponagachi for more information you can just visit the website and get more information about Ponagachi how does they work and everything about that after that now scroll down and over here I have provided the installation process. So in the installation process we need to just click on this link to download the image file. We need to just download the file which has .gib as its extension. So after downloading these two files now navigate to the file manager to the download folder to extract these two files. So from the first file we will get the RNDS driver so that the, the Ponagachi being de de detected by our computer and the config.toml file which is the most important file in this Ponagachi. After and the second will give us the image file of the Ponagachi. So after all these downloading and extraction now navigate for the start menu and search pi imager. So now we need an imager. So you can use any other imagers like pi imager, rufus or belina Edger. So I am using pi imager. So in the past videos I have shown you guys how you can use this pi imager. So just open the pi imager from here just choose the device that you are using. So I am using raspberry pi 0 I will choose raspberry pi 0. So now click on choose os and scroll down to custom os. So just click on that and navigate to the folders where we have downloaded the image file. That is the Ponagachi Raspberry Pi written file. So just navigate to photos folder and select the .img file. After selecting we need to select the storage medium. So just insert the SD card to your computer and it will appear in over here. So after selecting the SD card it will start the boot process. So now it is asking to use edit settings. So you will tell no. Now it is asking that the storage medium will be formatted. So click yes. Now the process has been started so let it be running it is take around 10 to 20 minutes. After the flashing process has been finished just remove the SD card from your computer and again insert it into your computer. A new partition name boot will appear in your file manager. So over there you will find there is a file called config.txt file but there is no file named config.toml. 
now we need to navigate to the first folder that we downloaded so over here you will find a name file name called config.toml so just open the file so the config.toml file is the most important file in this whole installation process so please follow this part very carefully so first of all we need to change the name of the ponagachi over here i have put cybercad as its name but you can put any name that you want after that under main.whitelist we need to specify the name of our ssid that is the name of our wi-fi or else the ponagachi will start to hack our own wi-fi so after specifying the name of our ssid now under here ui in dot display we do not need to change anything so over here it is written webcr underscore 3 so it is specifically for webcr version for display but it is written 3 but it will work i have tested many times so after that over here it is written ui dot username web username so we can modify this part to different thing as you want so this is the information and the login and password information of the web it portal so you can change it according to your need but you need to remember that after you have changed it then under here we can see there is written ui.web.port so this is the port number that you can entry enter here so the, i have put 3000 9000 port but you can use any other port but if you do not have any idea about what is port number and how does they work or ip addresses then i suggest you to not change this thing so that's all the config file the after modifying all this file just you need to copy this file into the boot partition so just ctrlc and paste it in the boot partition Now just remove the SD card from your computer and insert it into your Ponagachi. And after that connect the Ponagachi to your computer using a data cable and you should make sure that you are connecting the Ponagachi with the data port. So this is the data port of the Ponagachi. After connecting all this, now wait for at least 10 minutes so that the Ponagachi can generate its key. So if you have connected a display, it will show you that it's generating key and you should not power it off. And if you do not have any display, so you need to wait for 10 to 20 minutes, pretty much sure that it will do its work within 20 minutes. While the Ponagachi is generating its key, in that time let us install the drivers that is required so that the Ponagachi is detected by our computer. Just navigate to the first folder that we downloaded. So from there we will get a file called mod rnds drivers for windows so just extract that file and just remember where it is extracting now after completing extraction go to start button and search for device manager so from device manager we need to install the drivers so click on action button and add drivers now from here we need to choose this option so that we can install the drivers from our computer and over here we need to specify the directory that is the path of the file where the drivers are there so click on browse button and navigate to the folder where you have extracted the files now just select the folder and hit next it will automatically install the drivers now close this thing now over here you need to scan for hardware changes now click on this option and it will check for all the hardware changes after the driver installation so after this uh, you will see under network adapters option a new option will appear called usb ethernet rndis gadget so this is the Ponagachi desert which is now detected by our computer. Okay, now the Ponagachi is detected by our computer. Now we need to specify its IP address and subnet mask. So for that, go to start menu and search for control panel. So from control panel, select the option network and internet. And then select the option written as network and sharing center. After that, at the top side of the left corner, you will see an option like change adapter settings. So after clicking on that option, you will see different network devices. So from here, you need to choose the option where it is written USB Ethernet RNDIS gadget. So just double click on that option. And then click on the properties option. Now under that, we need to navigate to the internet protocol version for TCP IPv4. Now over here, we need to choose the option that which is written as use the following IP address. And over here, we need to type 10.0.0.1. This is the IP address of the Ponagachi. And then the subnet marks. It will be 255.255.255.0. After that, hit OK and then close this window. Now at this point, if you have connected a display to your Ponagachi, then you will already see that it is now in manual mode. So if you do not have any display connected to your Ponagachi, just navigate to the GitHub repository. Over here, I have given this link. Just click on that and you will be redirected to your browser. So over here, we need to put the username and the password we used in the config.toml file. So after it entering, you will get into the Ponagachi. As you can see, this is the Ponagachi face in your computer. But the Ponagachi do not hack into Wi-Fi when it is in manual mode. You need to restart it into auto mode to start hacking. So for that, just disconnect the data cable from the data port and connect it to the only charging supported port. And wait for 20 to 30 minutes so that the AI can start itself. Okay, that's all. Now your Ponagachi is ready. Of this video, I will show you how you can add new plugins and modify the Ponagachi. So subscribe the channel for the part 2 of this video.